It was upset alert in Berkeley this past weekend as Justin Wilcox's Cal Bears squad got after the Washington Huskies and were able to beat them 12-10. It was a defensive battle, but in this video we're going to look at two offensive elements. If you're a Cal Bears fan, you got to like the trajectory of your program, where they're heading. But if you're a Washington Husky fan, a lot of questions. Not feeling too hot, a little uneasy. And while I don't have all the answers... <coughs> I think I do have an explanation for that fourth down call. A lot of criticism on that play. How can you take that sack, Jake? But I do have an explanation, and let's dive in to see what I'm talking about. And just so we're all on the same page, I'm going to show the fourth down clip I'm talking about right here. It's fourth and 10. There's 11-24 left in the third quarter. It's 7-6, to six, tight ball game. Neither offense has really got anything going, and Washington elects to go for it right here. Not do anything. Oh, they are. They are. Wow. Indeed. Oh, down he goes. Right. Mm. Pass. It's fourth down. Get the ball to your hands. You can't take the sack. Lynch. We've all been there. We've all said that sitting on our couch. And it isn't wrong. You're 100% right. It's fourth down. Can't take the sack. But I will say it's a lot easier said than done. But what I want to point you guys to is that play call right there on that sack was the same play call when we go back to the first quarter that Washington had a successful third down pickup on. It was third and 14. They called that same play you just watched with that sack on that third and 14 pickup. And so let's watch it here. And it will. Amari Pleasant, 24 checks in. So three backs on three plays. And the crossing pattern caught. It's Aaron Fuller, it's a first down. Great pass pro by the offensive line and a nice little connection by Jake Browning to Aaron Fuller to pick it up on this third and 14. If you're picking up third and 14s, you're doing something right, or the Cal secondary is doing something wrong. That's a great job by the Washington offense, but I want to point you guys to the concept. It's a three verts concept to the top of the screen, and they're going to bring the receiver on the bottom of the screen on a five-yard under route. Jake Browning recognizes that the corner on the bottom of the screen is going to travel with the five-yard under route. Therefore, there's a huge vacancy on the left side of the field. And with Cal electing to play man coverage here, Jake Browning really wants to exploit that, and he wants to hit the inside most vertical route coming from right to left to pick up this third and 14. Great pass pro, great concept, and great execution by the Washington offense. So with that in mind, it should come as no surprise that fast forward two quarters, and you're sitting at fourth and 10. Gotta pick up a long down and distance. What should you call? Fake 23 blast with a backside George reverse you. The same play you had success with earlier. So let's watch that crucial fourth and ten once again. Not do anything. Oh, they are. <laughs> they are. Wow. Indeed. Oh, it's that's that decision. Down he goes. What are we doing? You can't take the sack. Throw the ball away. We've all been there. But let's be Jake Browning for a minute. Two quarters earlier, you called this same play and picked up a big third and 14. Therefore, this time when it's fourth and ten, you're thinking, all right, I'm probably going to look at that interior vertical working from right to left, I'm probably going to look at that again. And when we play this play again, he's not wrong to look there. The DBs on the left side are both vacated. The corner blitz and the safety rolls with the under route coming underneath. Therefore, there's no one backside on the left side. So if Jake's able to get a beat more time and protection, he's going to throw this ball to the inside most vertical and pick up a big gain. And we would be sitting here saying, oh, wow. Washington's great on third and fourth and longs. That's a fantastic disguise by a Justin Wilcox defense. Very hard on a quarterback, but that's on Jake Browning. He's got to recognize that the corner cat is coming. His receiver was yelling it out. So whether it's Jake or the offensive line, they got to recognize it or the running back. I should note that something's got to change, whether they reslide the protection, but you're never going to have success if you can't protect. And while Jake Browning's eyes aren't wrong, his thought process isn't wrong, you can see what he's thinking, how he's processing, but the reality is, fourth and ten, got to get the ball out of your hands and got to know what you're seeing so you can execute at a high level. But now let's go over to the Cal Bears side and looking at their offense, when you think about Cal, you think about run game. Patrick Laird, their best offensive player in my opinion, and then you look at the, the two quarterback situation, running a bunch of wildcat with Brandon McIlwain, but what I want to focus on is their passing attack. And Chase Garbers, he's doing a good job. He's getting better each and every week. They go to him for more of their pass concepts. And there's one concept that they ran multiple times throughout this game that I want to introduce to you guys. And the concept's called Hank. No idea why it's called Hank, but 
every coach I've played for that has installed this play has called it Hank. So we're going with Hank today. But anyways, it's a great concept. You'll see it at high school, college, and NFL. And to me, this concept is great for two reasons. One, it's a fantastic cover three beater. And so when you're a team like Cal who doesn't have the best passing attack and has a great running attack, you're always going to get an extra safety in the box. Therefore, it's going to be one high and you're going to get a lot of cover three looks. This concept is very advantageous to that type of scheme. And then the second reason is it's very easy to read. It's one to two to three. Very simplistic read and very friendly for a young quarterback. All right, Max, so what is this concept? Hank starts with a five-yard sit route over the ball. That's Chase Garbers' first progression here. Usually it's run by a tight end, but it could be a slot receiver or whatever it may be. But in this case, it's a tight end. That's Garbers' first progression. If that receiver is there or that tight end is there, he's taking that throw every single time. Then if that throw is taken away by a linebacker, the next progression is you have curl flat concepts on both sides of the ball. 12-yard curl routes by the receivers on the outside. And I say flat routes, but this could very well be a running back coming out of the backfield with a swing pass or an arrow, whatever it may be. But there's some receiver body going in the flat. When we go back to Chase Garbers' mind, if that initial receiver is not there, whatever backer took away that throw, Garbers will then take his eyes to the side where that backer is coming from. It makes sense, right? He's probably leaving a vacated zone, which is advantageous for a curl route that's gonna use that same window. Just to recap, one, to the sit over the ball. Two, to one of the curls on the outside. If, if someone drops underneath those curls, then you take it down to the arrow on that side. One, to two, to three, very simple. Doesn't matter the coverage, you're sticking to that progression no matter what. So with that in mind, let's see how Cal and Chase Garbers operate this concept. Yes. Got to get Patrick Laird going. Barber's Love it. Sticking to progression, taking what the defense has given you. The tight end's there with his little sit route. Give him the ball. Never go broke making a profit. Find completions. Completions lead to first downs, and first downs lead to touchdowns. The clip we just watched was from the second quarter. Callie Lex to come back to this same concept in the third quarter. I'm coach. I'm saying, hey, look, guys, we're not going to be favored in any one of those games. Nice pass. And a good direction. A nice job by Chase Garbers working to his second progression. First progression, not there. Tight end on the sit route. It's blanketed by a UW defender. Where he feels the vacated zone to his left. Open up. I turned left. Takes his eyes there. Delivers an accurate, timely strike right on to Vic Wharton's chest. It's on time. Therefore, he's able to make a catch, make a guy miss, and pick up a nice gain for this Cal offense. Cal's going to come right back to this Hank concept for a third time late in the game. Let's check it out. <laughs> I thought he took a step and a half. Stepping up. The fact that Cal came back to this concept late in the game, only five minutes left, got to move the ball through the air, it tells me a lot about Bo Baldwin's mindset. He's saying, all right, I know I got a young quarterback, but I know he can operate this concept. It's one to two to three, very simple read, and I know this concept's not going to put my offense in trouble. But obviously that play didn't work out through the air. But you can at least still visualize the concept. If Garbers hadn't got pressure and he wasn't forced to step up, he would have gone to his first progression, the tight end on the sit route. That would have been covered. He would have then gone to his second progression, either one of the curls, either the curl on the left side or the right side. In this scenario, Washington elects to drop eight defenders. Therefore, there's not a lot of zones to throw through. Those curl routes would have been covered. Garbers then would have been forced to go to his third progression. Whatever side he went to for his curl route, he would have stuck on that same side for his flat route. It would have been nothing fancy, but it would have been a positive yard play on a first down when you're trying to move the ball. So there we can get a nice feel for this pure progression pass play. It's one to two to three. Great cover three beater, and teams can run this in all sorts of ways. You can run it with two tight ends, one tight end, four wide receivers with running backs, two backs in the backfield. All sorts of variations that give an offensive coordinator a lot of options to play with when wanting to attack a defense with this one concept. So we talked a little Washington offense. You might be sitting there thinking, hey, that fourth down play was the dumbest thing ever. One of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. But I at least gave you some insight into what Jake Browning was processing during that play. And then on the Cal side, fun to see a team take that next step. Fun to see this offense grow, this program get a marquee win against a great Washington program. But nevertheless, if you are new to this channel, be sure to check out my other videos. Subscribe below if you have not. I'll be coming out with new content each and every week. But I thank you guys for joining, and I'll see you guys here next week for some more breakdowns.